Right, I want to get this body off today, so we're left with just the chassis. Let's start stripping it down. Right, well it's a beautiful Sunday afternoon now, and I think I might as well take this opportunity to get the body off of the actual chassis. So um, apparently there's not too much involved, but it's gonna be a two-handed job, so I'm gonna need Gary or Jimmy to give me a hand, but Jimmy's not here at the moment, so um, I'm gonna start unbolting a few things, and um, let's take you on the journey so you can see what I've got to do to get the chassis separated from the body. Right, well the first thing I'm gonna have to do is to take the battery off, and uh, it looks like a new battery on this, so I'm quite pleased with that. I'm hoping that it's just going to need a recharge when I come to actually fit the battery. And as I say, the, help, the actual battery tray and everything in here is it's all been repainted, so it's obviously been well looked after. And this is held on by some big wing nuts, which I'm just undoing first. Yeah, this is a positive earth system. I've just seen in that strap there goes down to the body, uh, the chassis. Right, and the other one there goes down to the engine earth. So it's engine and chassis earths there. And as you can see, someone's put a little strap on there with duct tape to get the battery out. We're gonna to need to separate the steering column, but I'll do that a little bit, a bit later on. But till now, let's go inside the car, get the straps off of the seats and get the seats out, because there's a few bolts we've got to get access to inside. So let's do that. Right, I've got these little seats here then, and uh, <laughs> look. Just found that in there, look, help all you plonker. <laughs> Put that in the glove box. Right, so I've got these little seats here. Um, we'll try and undo these first. And then I've got to get the front carpet out, so I wonder if these are bolted underneath. Yeah, underneath I can feel they go straight through to the floor and they're spinning because they've got nylock nuts on them, so I'm going to have to hold back underneath with a spanner. But I suppose the great thing about this is, is that it's all been off before by the looks of it and uh, it's all in very sort of good condition so i'm hoping not to have to worry too much about doing any work on the chassis or with any of the bolt-on parts as well so if anything i know i'm gonna have to do engine work because uh the engine is smoking and i think there's a problem with the clutch on it so that's just to be expected Right, so I'm just going to zip through and take these four bolts off and then we'll lift this seat off. Right, that's that unbolted. That should just, look at that, look, just lifts out, look. And that's all we've got there. Now, I've got, obviously there's some sort of packing strips that the previous owners put in there. And I've just got to undo one more bracket at the back there, as you can probably see. There, and they're just like little bits of wood there, like packing, I think they just made them up, look to, to go on the floor there. So I'm just gonna take them out, and this cowl in here just pops on, I think. So this has got to come out as well. I think it's just held on by a press touch, yep. And they just literally pull off. Okay, now, hold on, this comes out there. Hang on, that just pops out there, put that in there for the moment. And that should now, hopefully, lift over that choke cable there, what he's put on there, look. That should just pop through there, hopefully, yep. Well, that's it, that comes right out. And I can see what they've done now, yeah, they've put the choke cable on this plate here, and that originally would have gone up there. There's some sort of indicator lamp in there, I don't know what that's for now, but... Uh, and as you can see, everything's in ex excellent condition, isn't it? <coughs> That's not 10 mil, that's 8 mil. I should have a pair. Oh, it's loose anyway, so to be able to undo that. And uh, I was going to paint all this, but I think what I'm going to do is to keep all this dashboard in the original condition because they're very, very rare to get these in the original condition. And obviously, I'll be painting the door shuts because this will all be yellow, but everything from here onwards I'm going to keep as original as I can. There's a hole here, look. Oh, it might have been there, I don't know. It could have been there, I'm not sure. I'd have to have a look in the uh, manual. But uh, that's definitely not the place for it to go on there. 
So there's been some sort of a, a alteration. I was under the impression, I'll tell you what I think, that looks like that might be an indicator. You might have used that for an indicator. That might have gone there. That might have gone over there. And I, th I would imagine that would have gone there. Mm. So why aren't cars just simple to work on anymore? <laughs> right, let's get that one off of there. As I say, this has obviously been well looked after because everything's totally original. It comes out there. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. Look. Right, okay. Well, there's a little engine there. As you can see, that's the starter motor there, or the dynamo rather. All very compact and tight in there. And as you can see, there's really no soundproofing at all between this thin wall there. So you're listening to the engine on a bit of a little thin bit of fiberglass and the, the carpet. So we'll take this front one off as well because of the clutch cable. As, uh, the choke cable's got to be disconnected from that anyway. So oh, oh yeah, it was just stuck then, wasn't it? Just a rubber gasket making it stuck. There we go, yeah. So you should be able to get to behind the back of this bit now to just hold that. Or we'll just unscrew that there. That's it. Stay there for a minute. Alright, okay. Let's get it off of there. Alright, that should pull out now. Yeah, they've just made some sort of bracket on there, look. That's all that is. That's just a bracket they've made up, isn't it? But that's going to come out anyway. Right, okay then. So that's that off of the body. So let's just get these two seats out then and that, that finish getting this bracket out and we'll have a pick up with all the nuts and bolts. Right, okay, both seats out, so Gary's just going to move out the uh, inside matting which someone's obviously laid in there. There we go. And that reveals the floor bolts and also the anchors for the um, seat belts. As you can see, just like I've got on this side. So that's got to have to be undone from underneath which bolts through into the chassis. And as you can see, these are the actual floor bolts, which we're going to remove as well. And at the front, if I remove this carpet here as well, like that, that reveals this little inspection plate there. Which if I go underneath, I don't know whether you can see there, just underneath there, that's the uh, master cylinder there, which looks to be a pretty new one by the looks of it. And that's where you fill the fluid up from. And as you can probably see, everything looks like it's been replaced, so I'm quite pleased with that. A rubber plug there. Oh, I don't know what that does. I have to have a look into that, I'm not sure what that does. So, right, well there's a few bolts obviously which we're going to have to undo on the chassis, but um, the steering wheel's got to come off now, and that involves untaking off this little Baker-like cap here. You've got to be careful with this. I don't want to really have to damage this. There we go. Right, well it looks like there's a little slot inside of that, so I've got a little terminal screwdriver there. Not quite sure exactly how. Oh yeah, there we go, look. So that literally just makes a connection in the centre push there by undoing that grub screw there. So that's hopefully it. So I'll just undo this nut now. There we go. Undo that. One oldie worldy steering wheel off. <laughs> That's that. Now I want to take that grommet out of there as well. 
that should make life a little bit easier when uh, withdrawing the steering column hopefully all right okay right that's it that's that off let's get in the engine van let's have a look at withdrawing the steering column and taking a few more hoses out to give us a bit more room Right, we're just going to take these four air hoses out. Gary's just taken one out there. And that just makes life a little bit easier, apparently. So, if you can't get on the Jubilee, Gary, just see if it pull off. Ah, <laughs> yeah. They've obviously been out before. It's two of your side. That's another one. Take that one out there. Right, where's that one go? down there these actually go to the uh, footwells don't they yeah there's little vents in the footwells there basically and that's the uh, air intakes for the footwells right that's them out right so down there here's the steering box there you can see the steering column and i think i'm gonna have to undo that from underneath it might it mounts onto this bracket there right underneath and there's obviously joins on to a ball joint down there so that has to be removed as well so I think I'm gonna to have to get underneath for this one right well here I am underneath now and I'm just on the track rod arm which leads up to the steering box because the steering box has got to come out so obviously this track rod arm has got to be disconnected from the front wheel so let's undo this There she pops. And that's the ball joint out now from the steering box. So I've got, there's one bolt there, one bolt there and one round the back to undo and I should be able to pull that steering box and column straight out. So I'm gonna undo them bolts now. Right, well we've undone the two bolts there, one there, one there and one at the back there as well that's that holds it onto the the chassis and there's a cable here to undo which i've just got to take the terminal out that goes to the back of the steering box not sure what that does but we'll disconnect it anyway like that now i'm thinking that that steering rack now you know, the ball joints just dropped out this is there any brackets up there no yeah, don't pull it Go on. Bracket up here. But can you undo that? I've got a. Oh, it'd be half inch. Yeah, 13 will do it. That's the thing, because it's 1967, this, it's all Imperial, isn't it? So, uh, the actual steering rack, the three bolts, weren't too much of a problem to get out, but uh, it's nice to have so much room to work on underneath a car. With these new blink modern cars like the Mondeos and stuff like that, you haven't got any room to work, but this is absolutely superb to work under. So hopefully when Gary undoes the bracket up there, I should be able to pull the steering column completely out of the car. Then we'll be able to check to see if there's any damage to the steering box. Yeah. Right, got it. Right, okay then. So I'm hoping that we should be able to pull this through now. Is it coming? Yeah. No. Not yet. A bit more? That's it, it's on the nut now. That's it, it's through. Right, what's holding it? That's it. Yeah. Right, okay then, here we go. That is the steering column out. Now that looks like an old original one. It actually feels a bit grungy, so we might have to look into that. Either a refurbishment or a replacement one on that. But uh, there was a little lug up here, which had a cable connected to it, but we had to bend that off. So we might have to spot weld something back on there. But yeah, there it is, and as you can see there, the uh, the alley has actually broken there. So if this is refurbishable, then we'll have to alley weld that. But that's probably never been off. That's totally original by the looks of it. Right, so that's another bit out of the way. Right, 
Right, so we've taken them off now. There's a cable that goes straight round to the wiper motor, which is situated down there. And I'm hoping that I could just undo that flange nut there and separate the actual wiper motor just by undoing this cable. And as you can see, hopefully. Let's just try and do it from there, innit? So we've got Right, well the situation we've got here is that we can't actually disconnect the cable that comes up from the, wire, the, the, the wiper motor up to these two wiper metal mechanisms and also what's happening is these nuts which you should be able to take off are actually spinning so we've got to now cut these off so that we don't damage the actual cable underneath and we'll deal with it after so I'm just gonna have to grind these nuts off now so that at least we can just slide the actual body off of the actual wiper mechanism and leave that all in situ so that's what we've got to do here and we're gonna have to grind So that hopefully now we'll be able to turn this off because what was happening was, was the uh, top part was spinning as well. And we can always sort something out afterwards with regards to putting a new nut on. As you can see, just that we, had, we was happen to uh, just open the nut up there because this back part was spinning. There we go. So we now know that that one can go straight through the bodywork now and we can work on that actual mechanism once we get the body separated. So I'm just going to do the same to this one now and we'll see you again in a minute. Right, okay. There we go. That's dropped nicely through now and we can sort that out afterwards. Amazing tool, the little Dremel. So, get you out of a whole lot of trouble, that thing. So, get yourself one. Right, I'm going to disconnect the speedo cable now and a few other cables through the dashboard because there is no sort of dashboard as such on the back side here. You can see all the connections and they've all got to be taken off. So, I'll just undo the speedo cable first which is a big knurled knob there we go that's off there now as you can probably see there that's the back of the clock there uh, right this pedal was a a right nuisance to get out these uh bolts had nuts on the other side of them and the screw was actually spinning and i couldn't get a screwdriver man enough to hold into that slot so I had to cut the nuts off, so that's to relieve that one. That was a right pain in the backside. This one here is a bit simpler because there's no nuts on this one and I would imagine this is a, a standard fitment. But this is an Allen key. And for those of you who want to know the size, it is a 532nd Allen key. So these two screws that fit this pedal, which is countersunk screws, Allen bolts are used in this and I would imagine this is totally standard so I'm just going to whip these out now and that will free up this pedal so I'll see you in a second this one is the brake pedal I've already done undone the accelerator cable which comes out through the top so let's just undo this the second bolt there we go and the pedal then can just push straight through and I can just replace these two screws 
All right, there we go. That's the brake pedal disconnected from the body. So as you can see, I've disconnected the loom from the wiper motor there. That looks like it's going to need attention because it's very corroded underneath. And as someone kindly pointed out, they've done the DVLA check. It had an advisory on the windscreen wiper operation. So that's possibly the reason why that the motor might be a bit knackered. So I'll have to look into that as well. I've come back inside now and I'm going to be disconnecting this handbrake cable. Now you can do it from the back of the car apparently, but because I'm here I'm going to undo it from here. So I think that just involves undoing these two bolts here. <coughs> Should be able to lift the um, circle out somehow. I don't know. Not too sure. It's just something about a bolt being down here as well. Down this side. That one there. I think that takes. A, it says you have to take that one out as well. So I'll let you do that from that side, Bert. Just undo that. Got it? Yeah. It says that holds the handbrake bracket in or something. So you can't lift the body off without taking it out. So. You reckon? It's not coming out, it's just spinning. Oh, okay. Right, well I'm going to have to take a look underneath there and I might have to disconnect it from the back yet, so I'm going to just uh, get underneath and have a look. Right, well, you probably can't see, but back here I managed to disconnect the cable from the uh, just of where the rear axle is and that allowed us to push the cable through and remove the uh, handbrake le lever mechanism from inside the car, so that's how I've done it here. And I've also got to undo this flexible hose here the tanks actually empty so it's a matter of undoing these two jubilee clips here so that that will separate the fuel tank from the bodywork and I can see that that is loose now so that should just lift up when it comes now is there a fuel tank sender so I'm just going to have a little work my way around the back now just so that I can see any cables and clips and stuff which needs to be taken off so I'll get back to you in a minute Alright, I've just pulled the circlip out of there now we've disconnected it from the back let's get that pin out and that should drop out our cable, there we go Put that pin back in there. That's the handbrake cable out of the way. Right, okay then. So I've just checked the car up so I can gain proper access because I couldn't quite see what I was doing. So as you can see, that was the handbrake mechanism there, which is uh, nice and clean and well greased up. So that's what I've actually disconnected there and allowed me to push it through to get the handbrake out. There's a fuel filter up there. The tank's actually empty. And just up there, I don't know if you can see that. That's the fuel sender unit and I've just got to disconnect that one cable off of there so I can separate that from the body. Right, here we go, there's a the cable there and that just pops off like that and that now should allow me to, uh, the body to lift off from the tank. Right, there's a cable that's got to come off there, look, it's been painted over so that nut's got to come undone. And that one there. And you've got one down there as well, have you? Right, so we're just going to do that. And then as you can see there, the back light cables need disconnecting from up there. Because the loom's going to stay with the chassis, obviously. And that's what I'm going to do now. Right, we're going to start undoing all the floor pan bolts now. We think we've disconnected everything, and we'll only know that when we come to lift the chassis up. So, off you go then. Don't know whether they're going to spin underneath or not, or whether they go straight into the chassis. So, someone might have to get underneath with a spanner. Well, I bet we're going to have to turn in it yeah fucking would be wouldn't it that's an 11 mil spanner in not it right we've nearly gone around all the nuts now and unfortunately we've had to grind near enough every one of them out this side was okay the passenger side but the rest on this side across the um, front foot wheels and also behind, underneath the wooden platform here, we've had to grind them out. And also these last three along here, which are actually 
Phillips screws. So um, this is what we've had to do all the way along, and it's just taken about an hour and a half, hour and three quarters to do this. Speaking, this back should be free now, shouldn't it? <coughs> so we've just got four more to do in the um, front of the bonnet area. They're apparently quite awkward to get to, and I've got to get them from underneath. So we're just going to do them ones now, and then hopefully that should be the body free. So we hope. Right, hopefully to gain access to the front two bolts, which are right up under there. You have to get into this area here which we're hoping, just by taking the red out, will um, mean that we can get them off. Where's that? Does that come up? This one's stuck still. Oh, well, there we go. Right, okay. What's holding that in now? Will that come out of there? Oh, oh the cat might be holding it on, yeah. There we go. Just this top one here, hold on. Under that bracket. Right, that's it. There we go. Right, okay. It's, can that come right away? Yeah, you can pull them connect cables out there. They just pull out their bullet connectors. That's it. They're colour coded anyway, aren't they? That's a funny little radiator, isn't it? That's a heater matrix, isn't it? By the looks of it. So we're going to have to take this lid off then. We're not going to get our hand in there, are we? So this four 11mm bolts have got to come out take this cover off and then we can gain access to the other side of the bolts to hold back as you know we took the radiator out that wasn't good that's the heater matrix driver and this is held on this cover by four bolts there I've had to grind every one of them off and now hopefully we should be able to lift this out and gain access to the inside of that box section. Well, that's obviously never been off, as you can see where they painted to there. So this hasn't been off, which in my way of thinking means that you've never had access to the inside of these nuts, which means I don't think this body has actually ever been off. So that's my opinion. So I'm hoping, that looking in there, there they are. Can you see them? I see you there. Right, that's the little bracket, which is totally rusted and they're what you have to hold back on because they, they're spinning when I'm undoing it from the other side so the only way to gain access as you can see in there is via through here and we've never this has never been off by the looks of it so these are the last four bolts now before we can take the body off all right so you can see your bracket there can you yeah just at the top there just at the top there in there and I've got to go under the front wing we've already done the other side right that's where they are right up there right i'm on one of them yeah, bottom, one. bottom one yeah okay right, are you on yeah. it's very awkward yes that's it that's it yeah all right Right, that's broke, so that should come straight out. Oh, yeah. There New bolts going back in there. What a job. That's them two brackets that go on the inside. Alright, let's get the tools out of the way. Put all them away. So, all these bolts will be replaced anyway, so that's the best way to go.
Oh, 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 oh,